Hi, um, my name's Anthony. Uh, I'm a senior developer at Wellsimple. Uh, I'm on the data platform team, and I spend probably what is way too much time trying to optimize our uh, local dev airflow experience. Um, today's talk is titled Circumventing the Limitations of Multi-Tenancy and Airflow, uh, but I like to think of it as the dissemination of, of everything I've learned over the, the past six months, trying to create a cohesive end-to-end um, -end developer experience for uh, Airflow at Wellsimple. All right, so uh, let's talk about Airflow at Wellsimple. Uh, and, and in order to do that, I think we need to know what Wellsimple is. Um, Wellsimple is a fintech company here in Canada responsible for uh, investing the assets of millions of clients. Uh, and of course, Airflow is a big way of how we do that. Um, our Airflow deployment has in the realm of 300 plus DAGs um, across 30 different uh, teams uh, segregated by domain uh, and 80 individual contributors that um, uh, contribute DAGs on a semi-regular basis. Um, so when, when I began uh, trying to revamp Airflow, um, we had uh, Airflow as a monolithic repository. Uh, it lacked some sort of meaningful uh, dependency management, uh, and it had multiple complicated workflows uh, for you as a developer to get um, your stuff up and running, uh, or even like locally, but also in production. Okay, so a picture is worth a thousand words, uh, and this particular picture provides the simplest overview of uh, how the Wellsimple Airflow architecture is, is actually used or used to be. Um, but this this leaves out a few things, uh, it, mainly that it abstracts away the structure of our monolithic Airflow repository. Uh, in specific, it abstracts away how tightly coupled our plugins and, and DAGs are, and then the intricacies involved in um, interacting with the underlying uh, environment that Airflow is um, deployed on. Um, all right, so, so before we um, tackle that diagram, I, I think it's really important to try and present my thought process for, for the, the reimagining of Airflow that will allow us to circumvent the limitations of multi-tenancy. Um, so uh, Python is permissive, uh, and that ethos is embodied in a lot of the projects that are written in Python. Uh, obviously, Airflow is, is no uh, exception. Um, in general, this permissiveness is is seen as a good thing uh, by the users of Python. Um, and as it applies to our use case, it allows our uh, data engineers and data scientists to quickly iterate on, on problem spaces and ship value to downstream users uh, really quickly by doing some sort of uh, transformations or, or, or analysis. Um, but you know, uh, we're software people, uh, and we know that any you know perceived advantage also comes with some sort of uh, perceived or tangible disadvantage, uh, and, and this disadvantage, as you know, it relates to airflow. In my opinion, are, are felt by people like me, um, platform engineers. Um, it, it's impossible for me to not know, or anyone in general, to to not know what I don't know. Uh, and if I, as a platform uh, developer, don't, you know, am not vigilant in enforcing a rigid set of standards, the number of ways to you know s proverbially uh, square the circle uh, begins to explode. All right, so um, software projects uh, try to encourage their users to use their software in a specific way. Uh, and you can do this uh, implicitly or, or explicitly. Um, so explicitly tends to be stuff like documentation. Uh, and implicitly usually tends to be stuff like uh, code choices. So your user can't, you know, call a specific function in a specific way because it, you know, circumvents your design choices that you made for the system. Um, but, you know, it, it, it falls on us as developers to, to decide how we're going to, you know, use this software. Uh, and, and in the case of Airflow, you know, develop like all these processes are around it. So in the case of Airflow, I, I think there are a couple things that we, we need to provide for any of our users. Um, firstly, uh, some way to streamline the local setup of Airflow. Um, as we all know, Airflow can be rather complicated to set up, especially when you have connections to production and staging databases and people need real data to do their jobs. Um, we need some way to manage a local running instance of Airflow. I get a lot of complaints from people being like, hey, Anthony, why are there five Docker containers running? Um, it's really confusing for me to like use all this stuff, and I need SSH tunnels uh, in order to like hit Redshift or whatever, and that's really hard. Um, we need some way to manage the DAG dependencies. Um, this is 
we're in Python land and uh, you know, library dependency and dependency management is not a trivial task. Um, and, and finally, um, and the thing your users like care about um, is we need a place to put those DAGs and, and more often than not uh, somewhere to put uh, DBT models that will basically just be invoked by DAGs. All right, so I, I'm paraphrasing my homie uh, Antoine here when I say simpler is better. Um, as a platform developer, I, I don't want to cultivate an environment where bespoke workflows start to quickly outnumber standardized ones. Uh, and, and I think by offering a standard development experience, uh, we can simplify our interactions with Airflow, uh, bettering the things we can do with it uh, along the way. All right, so um, when it comes to redesigning how we use Airflow at Well Simple, um, it'll help us to like just point out the key issues we were experiencing and uh, and you know how how we will address them. Um, so so uh, I'm I'm sure you uh, dedicated that you know uh, diagram from a couple slides earlier where it was nice and readable to memory because I'm sure you can't see it now. Um, but you know uh, a few things pop out here. Um, firstly, a disjointed developer experience. Um, you know it. it Having two different workflows for doing anything, um, the bottom being production and the top being uh, how to use it locally, um, adds uh, you know a lot of mental overhead, uh, which causes like a huge time sink for for new and experienced users. Um, people usually also opt for the path of least resistance to do anything, uh, which usually means creating some sort of mental shortcut and then codifying it and uh, disseminating that information to your coworkers so that you know they don't really have to think super hard about how to set up Airflow. They, they can just, you know, write their DAGs and, and live their best lives. Um, and that brings us to our second point. Um, if you have your users doing things like codifying workflows and openly contributing those things back to your platform, um, they don't know what you know, and more specifically, they don't understand um, uh, the things you haven't articulated to them being your design choices for how you've laid out Airflow and how you expect them to use it. Um, this creates a, a, a case of unclear responsibilities, um, which again, like furthers to the detriment of of this system. Uh, it, it, you know, the number of ways to square the circle begins to explode here. Um, and then finally, um, even though monolithic repositories can kind of be freeing for some developers uh, because they can add their own, you know, scripts and whatever to make their lives easier, um, they also lack a, a, a autonomy, uh, mainly because you have to share one pi project or requirements.txt or whatever with like, I don't know, I said we had 80 individual contributors on this project. So like 80 people have to basically say, hey, um, can I bump this minor version of this package and will it break like the other 299 DAGs that exist here? Um, and I don't know that there's a great way now for us to thoroughly, you know, test all of those other DAGs when you bump your dependency. Unless you have like stellar unit tests or stellar end-to-end -end tests, you're probably not going to catch that until things are in production. All right, so um, when we're thinking about you know, this redesign and, and what we want to achieve with it, um, I want it to be easy to use. Um, I want everyone, no matter their level of airflow knowledge, to be able to use this system. Like, if you have Python, it should work. Uh, it should also be consistent. So consistent across uh, environments, consistent across user experiences. Um, I, I, I don't want someone to have to go to their friend and ask them about like, how did you make this thing? How did you modify the make file in order to make it work? Um, that's not great. Uh, and, and I want them to have confidence in the system. I, I want you to know that when you do something, it, it's going to happen time and time again until you explicitly modify that thing. And when I talk about this, I mean, I know that my DAG is going to use this version of NumPy, and this functionality is going to be available to me until I explicitly change that functionality or that. that. All right, so we know what we want to achieve. Uh, how, do we, how do we do that? Uh, so the most obvious way to me uh, is to break this thing up into smaller, more focused uh, repositories. Um, so here we have the four different 
you know, well, three and change repositories that will allow us to make smaller, uh, more focused um, things. Um, so firstly, we have Airflow Infra. Um, this serves as a place for us to keep our shared, uh, keep an eye on shared code snippets and uh, push best practices to users. Um, only the platform team can modify this, um, which means, and everyone else needs to make PRs. Um, so in this kind of gatekeepy way, um, we have a centralized place for configuration of our Airflow images uh, and a place where we can basically force people to write unit tests on their custom operators and shared code so that if someone goes to use that shared code, they can either be sure that they have a version that you know they know runs uh, or um, that if they run their DAGs, all the unit tests pass and no functionality has changed. Um, secondly, um, business logic repositories. Uh, I, I hate make files uh, as they pertain to projects like this. Um, I don't want to see any visual clutter. I just want to see the things that are relevant to my job. And if I'm someone who uses Airflow to, you know, figure out and solve business problems, I, I would like a place that's purpose built for that. Um, so business logic repositories cookie cutter repositories. They have everything you need. They're code owner locked, so no one can modify anything without your explicit permission. Um, and no one can change you know, uh, the way this interacts with the larger system. Um, basically, you know, we have a lockdown on all the ways that all these DAGs get synced to, to uh, production airflow. Uh, and they can't um, mess around with how they interact with, with secrets and environment variables. So we can provide a consistent experience for people. Um, how do we provide a cookie cutter, you know, uh, repository? Well, we have some sort of templating system. Um, basically, uh, if we have a templating system, just click a button, make a million of them. It'll always be the same. Uh, and then finally, um, I, I said, I hate make files. Um, so you know it's better than a make file, something that you can brew install, uh, and it's literally got all the setup in it. So you go brew install, uh, Airflow, you know, CLI, and you know, just like that, you have a robust way to interact with Airflow and you know, encompass all of the workflows that your users expect to have. That you know was once occupied by that you know assemblage of scripts in the scripts folder. All right, so so this is how. Um, We've reorganized uh, Airflow. On the left, users can't touch it. Um, this is all of the you know stuff to get Airflow into production. So we have our deployment pipeline on the bottom there. Uh, on the top, we have our repository, our Airflow Infra repository, which is you know responsible for building and tagging images and putting them into uh, AWS ECS. Uh, and, and then on the right, there's everything that the user can use and touch. Um, basically being that Airflow CLI, um, their specific um, DAGs repository, and then um, our secrets manager and, and uh, ECS. Uh, the users won't have express permission to touch those two elements, um, but they will have express permissions to, to fetch from them. All right, so um, this brings me to this you know, concept of, of pushing and pulling. Um, I often espouse this idea to my team um, that you know, the data platform team should be the progenitors of the best practices when it comes to, to working with Airflow. Um, meaning you know, we want a way to force our users to use the system in the way that we intend them to use it. So um, how do we do this uh, via standardized spaces, those business logic repositories? I said that you know we have a templating system and this is that templating system. If you are a new user, a net new user of Airflow at Wellsimple, you just uh, roll up to our backstage page, which is on our intranet. Um, you fill out a few key details, uh, mainly the GitHub team uh, that you belong to, the name of the repository, and you hit the buttons and you get a cookie cutter um, DAGs repository where it will perfectly interact with the Airflow CLI and be perfectly, when you merge to main, it will sync your DAGs to production. Um, 
Secondly, um, we can standardize our tools by having a centralized place. So before in the old setup, we had basically code that would sprawl everywhere. Uh, and this was just because we didn't really have a way to enforce standards on our users. But by taking away the freedom to freely contribute to these things without oversight, um, we can provide uh, a standardized image that's used across all uh, of our instances of Airflow at Will Simple, so on people's local machines uh, in development, or sorry, in staging and on production, um, you know, and that will provide a reliable foundation from which everyone can have a consistent experience with developing DAGs on Airflow. Okay, uh, and you know, here's the circumventing the limitations of multi-tenancy bit, um, isolated environments. So, you know, I had this flashy title at the beginning, uh, and you know, I'm going to talk 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 a bit to it now. So, yesterday, if you were um, uh, if you saw Yarek speak uh, at 11, I believe it was or 10, uh, he mentioned that uh, he had a conversation with Airflow. Uh, about how we discussed a desire to provide virtual environments uh, on a per team level so that, you know, people could choose their own version of NumPy or, you know, mess around with some sort of um, library that had dependencies that clashed with, with Airflow or with another team's, you know, libraries. Um, and, you know, with the external Python operator, um, we can do that. It, it works in the exact same way that the Python operator works, um, just that you specify a virtual environment that has all of your libraries available at, at runtime. Um, and, and how do we do that? Well, I don't want users to there. Firstly, I don't want them to have to refactor their DAGs. Uh, secondly, I don't want them to kind of have to have this knowledge of like, Hey, I have to use this external Python operator, and I need to know where my um, where my libraries are available via the virtual environment that was created um, by this Airflow, you know, infra repository pipeline when the DAG sync was happening when I pushed domain. Um, I, I just want them to like do go about their business as if nothing has changed. So um, we shimmed the Python operator. Uh, in the root of the DAGs repository, uh, in a init.py, we have this uh, curried uh, function. Uh, it just returns the external Python operator with the virtual environment um, specified, uh, like pre pre or specified to it from wherever the DAG is being executed from. So um, by overriding the Python um, operator uh, with this, um, we can expect that users will have an isolated environment uh, that respects their dependencies um, for their DAG. Okay, and, and finally, uh, we need a way to, to better run Airflow locally. Uh, I said I hate make files. Uh, and uh, another thing is uh, my hatred of make files uh, is only... Um, in terms of passion, uh, superseded by uh, how cuckoo I am for one-click installs. Um, I, I don't really like to read readmes unless I need to understand the nitty-gritty of something. If it's my job to interact with a piece of software, I believe that you should provide a cohesive and intuitive experience to use that software. Um, so we wrote a homebrew package on our homebrew tap that um, you know will make these things easy for, make Airflow easy for individuals to use. Um, the CLI aims to provide a place for users to manage uh, their multiple Airflow repositories uh, seamlessly. So I mentioned that we have a bunch of DAG repositories. Um, teams might work across domains, meaning they might have one, two, three, four, five different repositories with different DAGs with different requirements. They need a way to seamlessly, you know, switch from one or the other. Um, this also installs and configures our specific Airflow setup on your machine. Uh, and finally, it allows users to run Airflow uh, with a variety of containerization softwares. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests for Rancher support or Kalima uh, instead of Docker Desktop. So we aim to provide a place where people can use those technologies instead of Docker, assuming they don't have them set up on their machine. Um, so with this, I think this is the final piece in ensuring that users have a consistent and reproducible way to uh, interact with 
with Airflow regardless of where they're working. Uh, if a user has access to Python, the AWS resources they need, uh, and, and a GitHub, uh, then they should be able to use Airflow like from any machine. All right, so impact. Um, I've been with Wellsimple for about two years now. Uh, and I've seen our airflow setup change dramatically. Uh, previously, the setup took like 20 plus hours. Uh, now it takes five minutes. Uh, code was often spread out over, you know, a sprawling repository, and now we're actively deleting tens of thousands of lines of code, um, all because we can standardize workflows. Uh, and these standardized workflows also uh, push team-first decision making. If you're if if we can design Airflow in a way that it works out of the box everywhere the same way for everyone, then there's no reason that something should work on your machine and not someone else's machine. Um, I think I'm a little ahead of time. Time for questions. Awesome. So just a question about the templated um, repos. Mm -hmm. So if you avoid having monolith by allowing it or making it easy for users to set up their own repos and teams share multiple repos for DAGs. Um, how do you handle ownership of DAGs and repos as org changes happen and as people leave? If I set up my own repo for my DAGs or my team's DAGs and then the org structure changes, how do you kind of like uh, deal with managing all of these repos? Right, yeah. So. Um we have a tool at Wealth Simple that allows us to make mass uh, PRs. Um, it's called Microplane. So effectively, like there's no good way to solve this problem. It's just open up mass PRs across these repos, change all the references and the code owners to the appropriate teams, and now people should have their access restored. All right, anyone will? Why not? Oh. <laughs> uh, why not use a managed service for doing all this versus having to go create all these things, meaning all this jugglery yourself? Um, You're running on AWS, I believe. We are running in AWS. Um, I think money is a motivating factor for sure. Those managed services aren't exactly cheap. Uh, and on top of that, um, we want, we don't, in, in doing such a thing like this, we basically allow users to copy and paste their code from our monolithic repository to these smaller, more segregated repositories. They don't have to do any work and it's kind of easier for us. We don't have to work outside of the infrastructure we already have set up to provision this. So it, it's really it's really cost savings and time savings. What about the underlying Undifferentiated heavy lifting of having to manage, create, update all this. So infrastructure I mean, cost is one aspect. Did you also consider the engineering cost to maintain this? So, yeah, I, I that is a consideration. But um, like I said, twenty plus hours to install. Um, there's a lot of active firefighting that goes into that. Um, this is such a quality of life improvement that one person can manage that. It has been a heavy lift. It's been about four or five months of work, and that's my sole purpose. Um, but it's also achieving the undoing of a lot of technical debt as well. So it's an added benefit to the teams and the org. Makes sense. Thanks. Hi. Quick question. So uh, I did understand that you separated the business logic and... Um, Airflow infrastructure. So, but when different users log into your Airflow UI or something like that, how did you separate access for all those different teams? Like uh, that part, we, I didn't understand. Like during runtime, can't different users see each other's business logic and stuff like that? I didn't understand. Yeah, during runtime, they can. Uh, I'm not so concerned with people during runtime. I'm more concerned of uh, we want to give teams the choice to. Uh, choose the technologies they want to work with. Um, this isn't true multi-tenancy. Um, like we don't limit secrets. Uh, we don't limit access to like, you know, AWS resources. Um, this is just a first step to making it so that we can use air, a single instance of Airflow as if we had many instances of Airflow. Uh, okay, thank you.
Um, I got one quick question. So if you've got a monolithic uh, airflow and uh, multiple DAG repos, um, how do you manage deploying um, into that monolith? Do you have um, the Git um, hooked up to each one of those or yeah. do you have a different? Okay. So the, the templating is responsible for duplicating the um, GitHub Actions workflows uh, and the GitHub Actions workflows um, basically call deploy kit, which is our way to deploy and it plugs directly into that. So you just... Some of this is, you know, has to be on the user side. Uh, it can't all be super centralized in one place. And this is one of the pieces that needs to live where the users have their DAGs. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, everybody.